Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations, where we generally look at one or another lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And today is Sunday. Hurrah! We gather today for worship, to glorify God and to receive uh, not only his holy word, uh, but to receive his most holy sacrament, which we can only do in person. I know we've gotten used to watching the live streams and participating uh, from off-site, but it is so vitally important that we gather together uh, as a church uh, in order to be edified and equipped in word and in sacrament, to be fed in the blessed sacrament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You cannot do that electronically. Um, so uh, today, actually here at St. John's, we are commemorating a feast day that fell during the week, and that is, as it would fall on Wednesday, and that is the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels. It's such an important feast day that it, it merits an octave. In other words, within eight days, if a Sunday falls, which you can do the math, and you'll always have a Sunday within the eight days of a week, uh, the feast day and the seven days following, there'll always be a Sunday in there, we can commemorate the feast of St. Michael and All Angels on Sunday. I will make a mention, of course, of all this in my sermon, but I just want to point out a couple of things uh, by reading the collect itself that's appointed for the Feast of St. Michael and all angels. O everlasting God, who hast ordained and constituted the services of angels and men in a wonderful order, mercifully grant that, as thy holy angels always do thee service in heaven, so by thy appointment they may succor and defend us on earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, I'm sure I will say this uh, in my sermon, but please, 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 if you take anything out of this feast day, know that you do not become an angel when you die. None of us do. We are a different creature. We are a different order of creation, right? We start out today's colic by identifying God as the one who has ordained and constituted the services, or as other translations of the colic say, the ministry of of angels and men in a wonderful order. We are ordered different, right? Human beings are human beings. Angels are angels. Animals are animals. They're three different orders, okay? When you die, you don't become an angel. You become a blessed soul at rest. Uh, angels do not become human beings, although they may take on the appearance of human beings to do their ministry. And human beings don't become animals, although we sometimes act like animals. And animals do not become animals human beings, despite what the cartoons uh, might want to do otherwise. Folks, angels and men are a separate created order, but it's a part of how God has created us. They're a part of that invisible world. We say that he created the visible, that which can be seen by the human eye, and the invisible world, that part of the world that cannot be seen. Uh, and God is the creator of both, and the angels are a part of that invisible world that we don't see, unless the angel has a ministry to us, right? Because the first part says of this colic says that he's constituted the service or the ministry of, of angels and men in a wonderful order, right? And what do they do? What do the angels do? Well, first of all, they serve thee in heaven, right? The various different blessed spirits that is a part of that created order uh, have different jobs, and we have all sorts of names for the types of angels, angels and archangels and principalities and powers and dominions and thrones, uh, choirs, uh, and they all have a different job to serve and to worship God in heaven. But it also says that by thy appointment, in other words, God may de deign, uh, that they may succor and defend us on earth, right? And that's a reference to the work of the holy angels, such as St. Gabriel, who came and brought the angel, the message of Mary, to Mary of Jesus' uh, birth from her womb, uh, or the angel Raphael, the archangel Raphael, who came to help with healing in the story of the book of Tobit. Look for it. It's in your Bible if you've got a full, complete uh, version of the Bible, not one that's been edited. Uh, and also, we hear about the, what is called the guardian angels, that we have an angel that's appointed to us by his appointment, right, in order to serve, to succor, and to protect us. Their angels pray for us and help in our protection. So all of this important stuff for us to remember. Uh, we may like all the angelology of the cute little cherubs and all of those sort of things, uh, but we don't worship angels, right? All through the Old Testament, people make that mistake. They see an angel, they try to worship him. The angel always stops them and says, well, worship is due to God alone, right? Not to an angel. We don't worship angels, uh, and they're not some sort of magical, mythical fairy creatures, uh, but they are part of God's created order to glorify him and to help us. So more to come today at Mass, and I hope you will be with us uh, 7.30, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, or 5.30. And may God bless you this Sunday.